gang. Bun Nikki at Bunny Craft Oxford here with another Die With Me video. Thank you for joining me and if you're new to the channel, welcome. Um, this is going to be a quick but hopefully fun video. I have um, I've had a colourway on my mind and I've been trying to dye it multiple times and it's not worked. And I think I have finally figured out why. So we're now going to do attempt number three or four on this colorway. And I thought it would be fun to film what I'm hoping is going to be the successful attempt. So I'm gonna turn the heat down on this pan because it's actually really warm now. Pardons about the beeps. Um, so I'm going to need color, light. Maybe do overhead light, hold on. Is better? It's a little bit better. Okay. Um, it is 105. It is a my lunch break. I think most of these videos now get filmed on my lunch break because it's the only time I have and I'm jangling. So I want to dye a yarn that is variegated, predominantly has two colours. So one of them is based on a very, very dilute bit of oh I'm already dripping colour in there. Um, fire Engine Red, uh, Jacquard's Fire Engine Red, and this is what I mean about these bottles just leaking everywhere, everywhere. And then the other part of the yarn is going to be Jacquard's um, Bright Yellow, and then we're going to speckle it with Dharma's Purple Pop. Um, I want a very very small amount of the red and as you see I've already dropped some so I'm just gonna spread this around a little bit. I'm literally going to start off with just a half a tablespoon or 7.5 milliliters. This is 1% of um, solution oh, I'm getting on my fingers of Jacquard's Fire Engine Red. It is a, an insanely pigmented um, colour. So I'm going to drop that in and I'm going to spread it around. So we've got we have a hundred and twenty grams of yarn that we're going to dye because I have a 100 grams of my NCN color base in DK and then I have a 20 gram mini attached to it. Look at this, look at this bottle. I have the non-drip bottles but because they're plastic I hate like just not using things up properly. Let me, I'm gonna pause this video and just clean myself in a bottle because it's dripping everywhere and I end up making a disaster. Okay, <laughs> this is this is better. I am putting the red away because oh dear lord. So I have got my yarn. So the mini is a 75-25 merino nylon. Currently the only way I um, stock the merino nylon, the 75-25% um, is in minis. All of my other yarns are either MCN, so Merino Cashmere Nylon, 801010, or 8515 Merino Nylon. So we have, I've connected them together, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist them. Uh, because I kind of want the pinky red to go everywhere. I'm not going to twist them too tight, and then I'm just going to put them in here. And uh, move things around. And you can see a lot of a lot of red. I don't mind just sort of doing that a little bit. So I am, um, and because we're going to eventually steam set this, because I'm going to, when I do the purple pop speckles, I'm going to do them over the counter. Well, technically I'm going to do them in here, but there's going to be no water. We're going to leave it for 20 minutes 
and then we're going to steam set it in a steamer basket. And the reason for that is that um, this is genuinely even too much for this. I mean, you can see where it's absorbed. Um, I don't want any more pink. Actually, oh, this is so hot. I should be using my tongs. Just going to do that. So, I actually have another skein because I had a feeling this might happen. Um, I'm going to put this aside and I'm going to go grab a second skein to dip in here. So I have a silver Stellina skein that is again sock and it's 100, um, 100 grams and I'm just gonna, so I've got it straight like this, I'm literally gonna twist it once, twice on itself, um, not even that actually, I'm just going to take it into a bowl and just pop it in there and then just move it around. Right, so I'm going to leave this in here and you can see we still have quite a lot of white. We have very, very lovely soft pink where we've left it. All of this is going to come and, and absorb into that. So we're going to leave it in here. I'm going to turn the heating up, uh, the heat up, not the heating. Um, and we're going to give it 10 minutes and then we're going to come back and we're going to add our other brighter skein and um I, I i i have no patience um and see what happens so we'll be back with you shortly let me see see you get a glare with this it's so annoying okay so oh bubbles It's so hard with electric hobs to control the temperature. So, um, yellow. What I'm going to do, hopefully in a controlled manner, but quite possibly not. I need my spoon. There's my spoon. I have my spoon. I have my dye. I'm going to target it where I see a lot of white. So I've spread the, the two and a bit skeins in here. I've tried to expose as much of the white as possible. I'm also going to hit some of the uh, pink areas so that we get a bit of an orange, but I'm going to predominantly focus on the white. Um, one thing that I want to mention, everything that you see me use is specifically used for dyeing. All of my equipment is never used for food um, because I use professional acid dyes and it is not safe. If, if I work with the powders, I always wear a respirator mask. I always have my gloves on and I wear glasses but if I wear my contacts I do safety goggles so I'm going to try and put a little bit of yellow and I'm going to use my spoon to spread it out um, this is a 1% yellow solution and I'm doing it this way because I want it to be quite targeted um, I want to be able to decide exactly where the yellow is going to go and so with the silver Stellina yarn um, it's just gentle versions of pink everywhere so I'm just kind of popping it around and put a bit here so this is we're going to get a bit of orange here because we have a lot of the different pinks that mini I can see right here as I said I want this to be quite uh, quite variegated um, I want to be able to target just how intense I want the yellow to be on those particular white patches which is why I'm doing it this way. I'm going to open the yarn up a little bit and do that. I'm going 
going to do that to the silver stellina side. Um, just kind of remember around the ties, the zip ties. Um, it's really easy to forget the zip ties. Uh, let me see a bit in here that I want. I want this bright yellow, I want this sort of little bits of orange, I, I want this lovely soft pinks, um, there we go, I'm just going to put a little bit more. So the only thing that I still kind of have to figure out, I guess, is the ratio of the red that goes into the water. The, the water was uh, four cups of water, one teaspoon of citric acid, and you saw the 7.5 mil was too much, so I would half that um, next time I do this. Um, so this cane is going to go as a one-off skein um, as part of the Die With Me series and then I'm going to um, dye some more off camera um, using the final um, recipe as it were um, and see if I'm happy and then I can have it as a repeating colorway and this is kind of how um, how you come up with these things you know you try and you try again um, and this is one of the reasons why hand dyed yarns um, are a little bit more expensive uh, well, a little bit I say a little bit <laughs> a lot more expensive than commercial um, yarns because as we create these um, we have we, we have to use yarn to to test and to play around with um i mean i'm not asking for for, for pity or anything I'm, it, it's what i love to do and i'm incredibly happy and very very lucky to be able to do this i'm very grateful to all of you um and your support so that i can continue to do this and also oh my god how pretty in yellow is that i love this um so i'm going to give this 15 minutes and then we're going to come and we're going to turn this around and do something similar on the other side. I think the other side has got a lot more pink on it and not as much white, um, which is okay because we are looking for this variegated yarn. So I will see you in 15 minutes. Hello again. Right, this has been bobbling away for about 15 minutes or, yeah, about 15 minutes, just under actually, but you know. Um, I think pretty much all of the yellow, yeah, the yellow is absorbed. So we're just going to give it a quick flip. To the other side. We're going to open the yarn up. Make sure. I mean... I know I'm touching the yarn basically with just these gloves and stuff. I have asbestos hands, I really do. Um, so don't don't go poking around in boiling hot water um, like I do. It's very much a do as I say and don't do as I do. And I don't, oh, where does this come from now? I don't understand. Just a little bit of blue is flipped from somewhere. Oh well. Hopefully when I turn it around it will dissolve and go away and not affect my dream. I've literally been dreaming about this yarn and how to get this colourway to work. Um, I To say I'm a little bit obsessed with it because I didn't get it to work several times would be true. <laughs> um, okay, we have a bit of white here which is exciting. I'm just going to turn this around this way to expose more white around. I'm just going to move these a little bit. Uh, oh yeah, let's 
Right, let's get this unhooked from this because actually all it's doing is just hampering. Which way do we go? We go that way. And this is a very wonky. Um, okay. Yeah, let's untangle the two. Um, the reason why I do the mini as well is I, I like squashing my yarns. Um, I don't always swatch them straight away. I don't always have time to. Um, but I do eventually get to swatching them and you can you can find swatches of the yarns on my Instagram page Or if you're curious, you can always just send me a message um, If you can't find them or you can't bother to look as well um, And I will if you like send me a DM on Instagram. I, I will send you a Swatch or let you know when to expect a swatch Or maybe even just tag you next time um I know I'm fiddling, but I just want to expose that that white. Um, I'll be doing a lot of fiddling with this, but then you should be used to that by now. Right, I'm just gonna start with the silver stellina because I'm I literally I'm not I'm not bothered about that one. Um, that one's more test skein. Okay, it's got rough yellow there, so I'm going to add yellow here. I can see white, so I'm going to use that there. I'm probably mumbling at myself. I do apologise if I am. I'm going to put a bit of yellow back. And there. And if we do end up with some white areas, I'm also, again, I don't actually mind because then I will target them for the purple pop. So, a little bit here. I think, yeah, I think I'm going to stop with the yellow now just because i don't want this whole yarn to just end up orange um which if i keep adding is what's going to happen so we are going to give this another 10 minutes in here we are then going to remove it from the pan remove the pan from the heat and put it away from the heat put it back in the pan and do some purple pop speckling um what i might do and I think there's plenty of acid, the purple pop um, powder is also mixed with acid, uh, citric acid as well, so um, I've diluted it a little bit, so it, sh it should be fine. Um, but yeah, I'll be, I'll be back shortly. Right, so I've quickly squeezed out the excess liquid from the yarn, I've put it back in the catering pan just because I want to... Um, absorb any mess and things and I'm going to I've got some citric acid with some purple pop in here I'm just going to use my fingers I'm going to pinch some and I'm going to sprinkle um I, I want nice deep concentration so I'm not going for fine speckles I'm literally just going to go for sort of clumps of speckles um and I don't want it all over um, so what I've done is I'm actually going to twist the skeins around a little bit so various parts of the skein um, is showing um, and the idea is that they're not going to be all over they're just going to be this pop of colour that, that comes across so I'm going to actually change my glove to a dry one I have my respirator mask which I'm going to now put on my face and I'm going to start yelling at you so you can hear me hopefully right so it's speckle time I have no idea how this is going to work I'm just going to do a quick mix with my fingers and Uh, hopefully the yarn is wet enough. I mean, I've not squeezed a lot of colour out. Okay. 
You know what? I've closed this so I can take my mask off and talk. I I'm debating on whether whether I, I just want to put straight bubble pop powder on, but then I'm worried about it not setting properly and the citric acid helps it set. So um I think I'm being impatient, so I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing and see what happens. Sorry, I just, can you hear the focusing? I think I'm just going to have to put some music over this because I'm, I'm in the land of focus. Uh, I mean, it is actually doing what oh, I'm hoping it's going to do, but because I am clump, dumping these large clumps of citric acid, it takes a while for it to, to um, become damp and to absorb uh, this is this is genuinely not really how you would use citric acid at all I'm just being I'm being scaredy cat that's what I'm being um, purple pop is a colorway that is a color that is really really fussy like really fussy uh, and okay i think i'm done and that, uh, am i done there i don't really want to flip then i flip this way No, no, I'm done. Hold on, let me all go wash my hands. Okay. Um, so, as I was saying, color, um, purple pop is a colour that is really quite fussy. Um, it takes a lot to to bind um it bleeds so i've mixed it with citric acid because i know that that's going to help with it actually binding um if i need a little bit more water i can always just put i've got a spray bottle i can always just spray a little bit more water but i do think that the yarn is actually damp enough i just need to be a patient um and be where there is like these clumps that are not drying I can just move them around a little bit um, and I need to remember as well is that um, I can dye it again so if I if the yarn is dry and I'm not satisfied and I want more colour and I want more purple pop I can just wet it again sprinkle some more set it a second time and 
it's how I'm going to learn what to do, how to do it, and, and things. And it's, it's these trials and errors, essentially, um, that that make this so much fun because it's it's an always constant learning experience. And like this is what I mean about purple pop. I've barely touched it. And look, where's the cameras? Look at my fingers. There's barely anything, but this is so much pigment. You have, you genuinely have no idea. Um, <laughs> this colour just horrifies me. Um, I will, let me, let me show you an experiment. We have a little bit of water in here clear right i'm just going to rinse my fingers out in there that's now pink and i can tell you that i could probably get a really nice pastel mini out of this if i was to dump it in there um, i'm tempted to because i do have minis but i'm not going to i'm just going to drop some water well, there is still quite a lot of citric acid. So one thing as well is I need to remember, because the way that I've clumped this, I'm just going to throw this away. Um, it hurts me to throw away any sort of dye, but there comes a point where um, there's just not enough space to collect um, <laughs> dye leftovers. So what I'm trying to say is when we go to steam set this, um, we will carefully put everything in the steamer basket and um, I'll, I'll show you a shot of it all in there and this will spread a little bit um, because we've got these big clumps it will spread I'm aware of that I'm okay with that because this is really quite shallow penetration um, but I've never done this before I'm really curious to see what this will do I kind of really really love this but it's not going to be until this yarn is dry that we're going to be able to see the true colours. And I genuinely want that purple pop to be this incredibly bright, punchy um, spot of colour. I don't want it to, to just be like, oh look, there's loads of purple pop. No, I want this to be just bam, purple. Um, so yeah. Anyway, um, I'm going to leave this here for about 20 minutes. I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to get this to do its thing and absorb into the yarn and thing. And then I'm going to pop it in the steamer basket. I might turn the hop off until then. Um, I, I will show you the steamer basket before, um, before I put the lid on. And then I'm going to steam set it for 45 minutes because that is how afraid I am of this purple pop. I have now used it um, in several different ways. I um, I have the uh, neon block party colorway, um, which you should be able to find on my website, which is specially dyed for a uh, fiber block party festival. And um, um, I, that one worked well. I've I've learned how to get this colourway not to bleed, but it is in very, very specific, highly acidic conditions. So I'm, I'm still getting comfortable with it. Anyway, I will stop nattering and I will see you later. Hello again. Can we just sit here and quietly admire how absolutely sexy this yarn is? I'm, I'm madly in love with this colours. I mean... I, I know I dyed them, but holy moly, are they pretty. Um, oh, I really should find a way of filming these without actually being on the floor and hurting myself while trying to move around. I imagine the sound goes a bit funny as well. So first things first, the camera is um, really brightening up the pink. Um, so this is a lot more pastel and a lot more pink than the orange coral that's coming through this is a lot more like what you can see sort of 
here, I guess. And this is even lighter um, than it looks. But, unfortunately, I'm not a camera person, so um, we'll just have to do. So this is the silver stain Leander that I dyed. And you can, you can just see it sparking off as I move it around. And so this is a lot lighter. If you remember, I... Um, of course you remember you are actually watching the video you're not watching this two days later as I am um sorry so um I had too much pink in the pan originally so I ended up using this as a bit of a mop um there is a cloud that's passing over the sun that's playing around with my light but oh well um, so this is the lighter version. You can see these very, very pastel pinks here. You can see these very, very bright pink, almost fuchsias, where the purple pop, a pop has bled a little bit. Um, this is the yard that I actually wanted to dye. Um, so this is an accidental hap, um, you know, happy accident, accidental happiness. <laughs> um... So this is what I was after. I was after this sort of um, pink and yellows, bright pinks, bright yellows with these really, really deep, almost black in places uh, specks of purple pop. And that is what I have. I have tried multiple um, times to dye this yarn and have just had the ratio of the different colours go wrong um i would show you one of them but it's currently steaming because i over dyed it i ran out of patience with it it was just hanging in my yarn stash and irritating me and i needed to over dye it um so we still have areas like here where we've kept some of the white um and so and that's to allow Wow, this camera really doesn't like the purple pop, man. Um, so it's allowed for that purple pop to really pop. Um, it really is this bright and this bluey purple and then it goes into these lighter purple speckles and then the, the pinky fuchsias. Um, we have some areas where the purple pop and the... Um, Yellow have interacted and created this really, really deep um, orange, almost fire sort of orange. And then we have, I'm making such a mess of this game. Um, we have the pink areas where the purple pop has bled a little bit and made the area even pinker in, in some places. Um, and again, it's just really, really deep. Um, from certain angles, it genuinely just looks black. Um, but, yeah, so this is... This is a skein. We have some really, really beautiful sharp speckles. I don't know whether you'll be able to... Oh, yes, you will. There you go. I wish you just bring the yarn closer to the camera and you'll actually show the true colours. We are learning, ladies and gentlemen. We are learning. I absolutely love this. I think this is where the pink and the yellow have interacted and created this sort of glazed orange effect. Let me see if I... I know this is the tie, but I still want to just open it up and see what the fibres look on the inside. Yeah, you have a bit more yellow. It's It's interesting. Sorry, I'm almost talking to myself. I forget that I'm filming this for you guys. I, um, I'm discovering bits while showing you. This is really pretty. I really, really like the interaction. Do you know what it makes me think of? It makes me think of those spoons that you have at the moment where they almost look like an oil slick. Um, so you've got like the really deep moving into the different colours. Um... But yeah, you can see we've kept some of the white, which I did actually intend for once. Um, and it does have a bit of a water colory effect in areas. So yeah, this is this is the final yarn. There is a lot more yellow on this one than there is on this. Um, 
Let me show you the silver stellina. So with the silver stellina, we actually just have a lot more orange or just, just plain pink. Um, oh, look at this. Look at this. With the sparkle as well. Oh my days, this is so beautiful. I love this. And just the deep oranges that have, that have turned, um, sort of happened when you mix the yellow with with the lighter parts of the purple pop i i this is so pretty i love the way it's just sparking off um oh i like this bit as well where the white is playing with the pinks and the yellows but yeah so there is a lot more more just pure bright yellow in this one um than there is in this one this one's a little bit more orangey just because um we had almost all of the yarn um various shades of pink before we put any of the yellow on i guess this is the most yellow that we have and then i dyed myself a little mini because i want to swatch it um even the mini managed to keep some of the lighter brighter colors which i'm really really happy about um sometimes the minis end up being a lot more colorful and a lot more pigmented just because there's a lot less um yarn is a more dye to uh, fiber ratio so i don't know what i'm going to call this now that i know um how to dye it it will be in the shop so hopefully by the time this video comes out there will be a name to the yarn and um you, you will definitely be able to um find it in the shop i am going to put these two skeins up as the actual skeins dyed in the video and there will be um a separate um listing to whatever name this yarn is going to be called um so yeah thank you for um joining me for another dye with me video i really really appreciate all your support if you haven't done so already please don't forget to subscribe give this video a thumbs up because it really really helps um spread the love and get this video out to other people um who may also enjoy it and don't forget the notification bell so that you don't miss any future content if you want to continue to support the channel even further, then you can go down to links below and buy me a coffee. Or you can buy one of my yarns. The link to my shop, again, is in the video description below. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Love you lots. And I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.